I know you order look racist. So I mean, the quality went there. hella okay, down. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. What's good, man? How you? What's good, man? You got on your boots and shit. Yeah. Show the world your boots, man. In yep. the wide camera, them shits yeah. is fire, bro. Yeah. Straight up on my mama, That's, and they add probably like two inches to your like height. Yeah, my very very medium height. How tall are you? I'm I'm five seven. Okay, without the boots. No, 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 no. I'm five seven without the boots. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. That seemed kind of tall. No, that's like that's like on the lower like end of average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with the boots, with the boots, I think I'm rocking like five nine. You better not put a not. No, absolutely not. Yo, what? Stand up. <laughs> absolutely fucking not. Absolutely, you probably five seven with the boots on. No, oh, hell no, not. hell no. Absolutely. What are you? I'm six feet. Yeah, I mean, you got three, four inches on. Yeah, me. and I got on boots, so I mean. Yeah, I think that was like a four, three. You four probably inch about dip. five seven. Yeah, because these boots probably make me about six one. Yeah. 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 All right. okay. yeah. All right. So What's without good? that crazy intro, we got it out the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved it. So yeah. I feel like. You know, this is the first podcast episode, mm -hmm. and I, I really want to flush out this idea. You know, you're a longtime collabor collaborator with yep. Splash Media. Yeah. And uh, I'm really, really wanting to, like, hone in and figure out what makes creatives and artists tick, man. Like, get into their flow state, get into yeah. their creativity and why they do things in their, you know, their life. Because yeah. I feel like there's a, there's a facade a lot of the times with artists and creatives that people think yeah. is the kind of the narrative of them when in reality it's just starkly different when you get to talk to people. Yeah. And so yeah. I think, I think the reason why this podcast is made is to really deep dive deep and re, you know, really get into it past the like regular artist interviews that yeah. you see on the internet. So, uh, without further ado, mm. I think this is the appropriate intro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into the first episode. Oh, let's get into I'm, it. I'm, this is my boy, De Niro Farrar, and uh, I'm thankful to have you on, brother. Yeah, Thank man, you for I'm, being I'm happy to be here, man. Yeah. I feel like your only friend. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just like all over Splash Media. I know That's they're just, like, interview yeah. somebody else. Fuck this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But nah, man, it's, uh, you know, this this just feels so natural because yeah. you come to my house and, and, and we would do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, At the crib, 100%. We'd probably be. You know, chilling, playing chess or something. I mean, we did the other day food. during the snow day. We actually we did, did do we that, did, and I, we did do I embarrassed that. you. Yeah, so. well, I got you on the third game. Third, it's, it's two to it's, one. It's like it's like fighting somebody three times. By the third fight, it's like I'm tired of fighting you. Just like okay, come on. All right, you know so I mean? you're saying it was a pity win? I no, no, you beat me. All for right, sure. All right, all right, yeah. He's yeah. sick of stomping on me. Yeah, no, you beat me fair and square. <laughs> I, I don't have, I don't do, uh, even with my kids, I beat them with no mercy. At all, period. You know what I mean? I don't believe in that. Like, yeah. you know, pe pe uh, what is it? Pity wins? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. believe in none of that, bro. Yeah. Nah. Letting people not. win and stuff. I, life don't let you win. Right. So I won't let you win. I love Absolutely that. Absolutely not. I love that about yes. you. You're a straight shooter. You're Please. a straight shooter. I try to be. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's that's kind of like working against me a little bit uh, uh, here in Portland. You know Okay. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask you. Um, kind of the first like question that I had in mind is really talking about your current state of being a creative and an artist. How do you feel? You know, there's a, there's a lot to un top, unpack with that topic because one, you moved from Charlotte mm -hmm. to Portland, you kind of, you know, bounced into some major cities, but you're kind of landed here in Portland. So I, I wanted to I, talk about I moved about from that. New York. Right. I right. moved from Charlotte to New York, from New York to Portland. Right. So, yeah. So, so talk to me a little bit about your current state of being a creative as an artist. How you feeling? You know, are you putting out new music? Are you writing? Like, t talk to me a little bit about that. I feel like, I feel like because this is such a new environment for me. You know what I'm saying? I think everywhere as an artist, you kind of pull inspiration from your environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's me. That's kind of like my creative process. I get inspired by my environment. Right. Most of the music I created, I have almost 16 full-length projects. Most of, if not all of that music was created in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So moving here to Portland, when I first moved here, I've been here two years. I created an album when I first moved here. The first year I made an album with Ian. Um, 
my boy Televangels, yep, right? Yep. So the music that people getting right now is the music that I created when I first moved here to Portland. And then as I started to like go back to church, develop a relationship with God, uh, get more of an understanding around God as a concept, right? I, I prayed one day like a year ago and I was like, man, you know, God, I basically said everything I feel I could have said that came from me. You know what I'm saying? And my prayer was like, take words away from me if I'm not saying anything that would glorify you or I'm not using my voice to to basically further your message. And he did that shit instantaneously. I ain't wrote a song since. Swear to God. Yeah, we were kind of talking about Bro, that. I have not. Day. I have mm-hmm. not been able to write a song. And it's been so discouraging because my homie Chaz French sent me something. And, and I, I mean, that's like, you know what I'm saying? That's the homie for real. I, I don't have a lot of music peers that I consider like homies. You know what I'm saying? Outside of like Denzel and, you know, a few other guys. But Chaz French, that's the homie. He jumped on one of my records, came a long way. I mean, I sent it to him and like two, three hours later, he sent me a verse. And so he sent me a record, Fire. I'm thinking he just wanted me to listen to it. He was like, yo, bro, you know, the verse open if you want. And I took a few attempts at the record. And, man, I failed miserably. And I and I was just so, like, disappointed in myself, too. You know what I'm saying? And I hit him, and I kind of gave him the spiel. And he was like, look, bro, you, you the homie. Like, you ain't never got to explain yourself, you know. But ever since I prayed, bro, I haven't been able to really make no music. Yeah. Like, for real. I haven't. And and I feel like because every time I go to approach a record, I'm writing from my own flesh, my own experiences, and what I want to say. I'm not really pulling from that well of creativity that God would give me. You know? So I think as I cultivate the relationship more so with my faith, more so with God, I think the words will come. But for right now, bro, I ain't, yeah. I ain't making no music for real. I mean, past your relationship with God and things like that, what, what things that are starkly different right right off the rip from Charlotte to Portland are there in terms of like a, a general creative, like, like, you know, obviously probably in Portland, you haven't established the same sort of connections yeah. and, and network as yeah. Charlotte. So I, I want to kind of like dig into that and like, you know, how does that affect you moving forward and things like that? I mean, in terms of being in Charlotte, I could make, I could literally come up with a song as a concept and immediately hit my engineer and be like, bro, what you on? You up? You in the studio? I bet I'm finna push up and then record the song. I had so many resources in terms of video. I could literally send Will a song that he like, bet when you want to shoot it. I'm like, let's do it. That's why everything is, is, is like right away with me. You know what I mean? When I see you someone, I'm like, let's do it. Because that's just how I'm used to working. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so it's it's so different now. It took us two years to make a music video. Like, right. we just started working in 2023. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we had so many failed attempts at trying to put together a collective. Because I always felt like we needed a collective, this community of uh, this, this creative ecosystem. You know what I mean? Me, you, Russ. Um, just, just other people, you know, that we can pull it. Alejandra. Yeah. Alondra. Alondra. Oh God, I'd be butchering her name. Yeah, that's all Cut right. Cut this out. That's all right. God. I seen her the other day yeah, in Buffalo did. Exchange. Oh, did I did? tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she's, she's a thrifter. Man, yeah, yeah. she had, she had some crazy shit on too mm-hmm. when I seen her, you know what I mean? And, um, she was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll see you soon and we can work, but. But yeah, so establishing that like creative ecosystem, I know that that is when you look at every successful artist, they have a creative ecosystem behind them. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I needed to establish that because the first year of me being here in Portland, I was flying back and forth to North Carolina just to shoot music videos. Right, 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 right. Like I would go to North Carolina Thursday to Sunday just to get a music video done and to see my kids. And that sucked because financially that just didn't make sense for me. You know, so and then it's like my stream started to go down because I was so inconsistent with the music and mm-hmm. being able to put it out. I don't have the ecosystem. Well, I didn't have the ecosystem. Then I met you and we started developing our relationship. And then, you know, just I feel like everything just finally coming together. And this I, is the most consistent I've been. I, whole, I wholeheartedly agree, man. I feel like <clears throat> as much as it 
it was kind of like a, a pain to get the ball rolling. Yeah. I feel like our ball is rolling now. And I feel like, I mean, you can just look on, on the grids. Like, oh, oh media, that's you. Like, it's like, yeah. it's, it's constant now. So it's like, <clears throat> it's, it's really kind of like in that state of happening. But you know what I respect the most is that the relationship that you and I have currently has been battle tested. You know what I mean? I, f I feel like any and every body could be cool with somebody because they're cool, right? And I feel like most relationships aren't battle tested. So we cool because we cool. Nobody has ever said anything that offended somebody, so they always good. But with us, it wasn't necessarily that you said something or I said something that offended me or you it's just that we had opposing ends like we seen it differently and then that was i feel like the test to be like ah is that gonna work or not you know because we both we was like all right well cool we can kind of do you do your thing i do my thing and then we end up coming back together like you know what nah that ain't that ain't how we gonna move yeah with, you know i, what I I'm think saying? i think at least on my end i can't really speak for you but i know that that when we met up it was that meet up that really proved to me that like it, there was a lot more. I yeah. mean, people can disagree. People should disagree. Like yeah. you're not going to always align a hundred percent, but it's how you move forward exactly. from that disagreement. Exactly. And I, that was one of the things that we talked about. It was like, we don't, you, we don't really want to see this bridge burned. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. And yep. at the end of the day, if we can agree and align, there is nothing stopping us going forward. Facts. And and being able to talk about that disagreement is more important, in my opinion. That's a fact. Right. Hey, man, these fucking boots so heavy. It's making my leg fall asleep. Nigga, Yo, I'm take, taking these boots off. Take those things Jesus off. Jesus Christ. <laughs> taking these boots <laughs> off. Those are those. Shit. Those are those Red Wings three hundred dollar boots. I could kill somebody with no, these those boots. Are, these those bitches are, are heavy. Yeah, yeah those Lord, are. Some, get some. a gander at these bad boys. <laughs> Boy, I hurt one of y'all. I don't even need my gun. I just got my boots. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to kick up in this. I'm glad my socks clean. Yeah, yeah I mean, you. I hope yeah, they match, on match the couch really well. Yeah, so. true. Yeah. So, so this, I, I feel absolutely yeah. comfortable now. Yeah. Uh, without them heavy ass boots on. You Tell might. me, I, I mean, I know we were getting something there, but yeah. I feel like I really want to take this moment in this podcast or episode to kind of, kind of relearn about you. I know there's a lot of information that we pass passively, you know, through hanging out and doing yeah. things like that. But I feel like, you know, there's a lot to learn from you. you you got a lot of layers as yes. an artist in a person that has grown. I mean, yeah. you just look at your videos from years ago all the way up to now. Your your physical appearance changed, let alone your mentality, I yeah. think, because you've kind of expressed that over time. And so I want to talk about kind of like early on in life. What was it like growing up in Charlotte? What was the what was the like vibes like? Oh no! I mean, I mean, you know, every I, I feel like every rapper got this story. Like, yeah, man, I grew up, I was poor and shit. You know, yeah, yeah. I ain't had no dad, and you know, I mean, that was really my world, right? But it was normal. Like, I, I feel like a lot of the things that we go through, we normalize them. So it was normal to me. You know what I'm saying? I honestly, <clears throat> I hear people say this too. I didn't know we were poor. I didn't know we were poor. I, I just, I knew we didn't have much. But we always had food. We always had clothes. So it was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? And it was normal. So when you grow up in poverty, everybody impoverished. So it ain't like somebody pulling up in my neighborhood with a Bentley next door. It's right. like everybody poor. It's, everybody what, it's what you knew. It is, uh, it's all I knew. You know what I'm saying? But grew up, six brothers, two sisters, two-bedroom apartment. My mom working like crazy. She finally started to get better jobs as I like was like – headed toward high school, you know what I'm saying? So we started living in better areas of my city, but we had literally lived everywhere you could live on every side of town. You know, we were constantly moving, you know what I'm saying? I, I felt like, what did, what did they say? Like a vagabond, right? Where people, uh, a vagabond is a person who doesn't have a stable place to reside. Oh, gotcha. Cor correct? Am I, I, am I, I right I about did, that? I didn't know. There we go. Come yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. didn't, I've never heard that term before. I know a few words yeah, yeah. now. <laughs> uh, but that, that's how I felt growing up. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I never, I never, even now, you know, when our landlords get to tripping where we live, I be telling her like, yo, we can get the fuck out of here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, I'd never stability wasn't a thing for me where I was like stable with a home. Meanwhile, my partner lived and still had her same bedroom through college, right. through she's only moved twice in her whole life. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Me, I couldn't tell you how many times I moved. Yeah. So that was just like my life. You know what I mean? Growing up. Um, but I was I was like an average kid. I, I feel I was a good kid up until a point. And then I, I feel like I became a product of my environment. Growing up in poverty, I feel like being a smart kid makes you a target, you know? And I used to love to read Goosebunk books. You know what I mean? Are you afraid of the dark? Like, I, I man, I was just like, I was constantly reading. Yeah. You know, I'd be in my room reading. Like, I could literally think about it and envision myself being in my room in by myself in my room reading the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then something happened and it switched. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like my environment got the best of me. And I fell in love with my environment. I understood it. And I think learning to navigate that type of environment is fun because yeah. you get to develop all of the survival techniques and and the things that you need in order to survive that rough terrain like oh kind of okay. developing the street smart you you have to develop it yeah, you yeah. see what i'm saying so it's like it's all essential it's like a lion in a jungle and a lion in a circus they all have to develop these things in order to sustain and survive the lion in the jungle needs to be vicious the, but the lion in the circus understands that me being vicious isn't necessary here because I don't necessarily have this imposing threat on my yeah. life, you know, so they both have to adapt to it's the same animal, but in different environments, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was me, you know, I don't know. So what, a, what age, what age was that shift that you said? I don't know. I was, I, I was, I, I was young. That shift was probably like, I don't know. I know by the time I got to middle school, I was Fully like not rocking with school. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fully like when I get old enough to drop out, I'm going to drop out. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want to learn. I didn't care about learning. Um, I was always a smart kid, but I was just completely uninterested in school. Like in every sense. I dreaded going to school every single day. I hated school. Yeah. With a passion on a cellular level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hated well, the school bus, everything about school. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, was that what? So was that? Would you say, did that kind of side by side with when you started making music, or was there a gap? What kind of walk me through that? No, that was middle school when I yeah. when I discovered my hatred for school. Right, right. Was middle school. I didn't make it through high school. I only made it up into the ninth grade, and then I was like, I, I was at the age where my mom could no longer like discipline me. You know what I'm saying? Because right. in middle school, I was still getting whoopings and shit. Right. Like, so I was still making an attempt to, like, kind of have decent grades because I'm like, damn, I want to get my ass whooped on report card day. You know, my mom had so much going on. I swear to God, for a whole year, I brought the same report card home. I, I had a 2.42. I remember that was my highest grade point I ever, yeah, yeah. I ever got in middle school. It was a point system. I got a 2.42. And I was just bringing the same report card home for a whole year. She didn't even know. She said, don't check the date. Man, she, I don't even, she just had so much shit going on. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. eight kids. No, 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 100%. It's, it's like 100%. eight kids. You working. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She like, man, let me see the report card. She go through it. It's like, you need to get these grades up, these grades up. You telling me this every quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's the same, you know, so I brought that 2.42 home for about a year. Yeah. Yep. So I, it, it's kind of funny because my, I don't know if your school did this, but my school were low key some feds because they would they would kind of give the date when release cards were coming out but they would mail it so i would never know when it would hit my mailbox because i never got the mail as a kid oh, my, yeah. my mom handled handled the mail yeah. and got the mail so yeah i you know <laughs> you couldn't even dump no, the no there was card. there was no, no i did not get to was, handle my it. school was a little more negligent they felt that we were a little more responsible than we really were but yeah. it's like you're gonna trust me i mean you're middle to take some Fucked up grades yeah, home yeah. to my parents. Like you gonna trust me to do that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's see how far. Yeah, yeah. You're kind of you know you're kind of digging your own grave, man. man. I, it was so many. Oh, I ain't get my report card yet. Yeah, yeah. What you mean? Yeah. I, I just get a whooping off GP. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just <laughs> get this whooping for not getting my report card yeah. yet, yeah. and she'll just stop asking me about my report card. So I'll go in and take the initial. I didn't get my report card yet, ass whooping, and yeah. I just never bring the report card home. Oh, like, oh, he got, got it beat. out. He yeah, got, she got, got it out beat. of her system. So, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. uh, high school, man, she couldn't do nothing with me. She was working from six to six. Six in the morning, six in the evening. So she never even knew. Damn. Oh, yeah, bro. Did she barely had time to sleep. Man, I remember one time I skipped school. 
God bless the dead. It was me and my homie Corey, Aaron. No, it was me, Corey, and my and, and my boy Sean. Like this was like my friend group. And we had all the girls used to come skip school at my house. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. I just had that house because my mom worked from six to yeah, six. Yeah. You know what I mean? We on the back porch smoking a blunt one day. <laughs> and uh man, I don't know if we was just so high that we didn't hear the car pull up. But boy, the back door came open. I'm thinking it's one of the girls, cause they in the house. Mama came her boy, home the back early. door open. It's my mama. We uh, on the back smoking a blunt. I'm thinking it's one of the girls that's in the house. My mom opens the door. Flip all the way out. We go in the crib. The girl's gone. She done flipped and put all of them out before she even came to the back. Must have asked them where we were. They must have told her on the back porch. She opened the door and lost her mind on us. But, um... Yeah, I, I think it was around that time where I was like, but she can't whoop me, though. Yeah. So I, I hear her fussing all day, but yeah. she ain't going to put her hands on me. Yeah. And once I realized that she was no longer at the point of having the energy to put her hands on me. Right. I was like, I hear her lashing. You know what I mean? I hear her kind of blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wrote it off. Oh, well, because I'll back on the same thing the next day. It's like, you can't come home early every day. Yeah. Not happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. You yeah, had bro. odds in your favor. <laughs> you were working oh, the bro. odds. You know, I, I, I was a statistical. I was a numbers dude. I was yeah. like, okay, given, you know what I mean? So it worked out for me, man. But, <clears throat> and then I, 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 I went to school one day and uh, I asked the, the um, one of the ladies that worked at the school, I don't know if it was front office or whatever. I was like, how old do you have to be to drop out of school? And she was like, why are you asking? I was like, I'm, I just want to know. And she was like, well, in the state of North Carolina, if you're 16, if you're 15, you can sign yourself out of school. Like you can basically uh, drop out, but right. then you have to go through, I guess now it would be mental health services, you right, know what right, I'm saying, right, to right. kind of see right. whatever it is. But it, it wasn't even like this whole program. It was just like, you just had to go talk to somebody right. when you decided that you want to, I don't even know what they called it, like unenroll, I guess, yourself yeah, yeah, from yeah. school. You're just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're taking yourself And I out. was like, okay, cool. And she told me that the next day, I would say, I came to school and I went to the office and I was like, I want to uh, sign myself out of school. Like, I want to unenroll, whatever the terminology they use. And she was like, okay. And I was like, okay. And she gave me the paperwork. I did it. She made me go see a lady, Miss Farrell. I sat with her. She was like, why do you want to drop out of school? I was like, I just don't like school. It ain't for me. Yeah. And she was like, so what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. Probably sell drugs or something. I swear to God, I told yeah. her that. And... um. She was like, I don't think you should do it, but I can't stop you from doing it. Yeah. You know, state yeah, I mean, of North Carolina law says law. legally yeah, yeah, yeah. you're old enough. Yeah. I dropped out of school, bro. I'd never look back. Yeah, man. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, we're going to get to it, but you know, there, Boy. it, you went from loving school to yeah. reading. You went yeah. from not liking school, yeah. not liking reading, but you came full circle. And so nowadays you yeah. do love your reading. I've seen it first. Yeah. And, yeah. and are, I'm back in school. You were back in, you're fucking yeah. educated, man. Yeah, bro. man. You, yeah. you are, yeah. you are. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of like making that decision to drop out of school. Then I wouldn't go back and change anything because I, I understand what people say. If I, it's like butterfly effect. Every time you alter something, something else gets altered in the process. 100%, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, man, I'm, it's like I'm a living testament to to my own experience. You know what I'm saying? But if I if I would have dropped out of school for real, for real, bro, I don't know if I wouldn't have, have dropped out of school. I don't know where my life would have took me. I wouldn't be on this couch with you because I decided to drop out of school is the only reason why you know me. Because right, right, it right. sent me in a different right. path. And then I discovered music. Yeah. And then this trickled into that. So every decision, every minor micro decision affects and impacts like bigger decisions. hundred percent. You see what I'm saying? hundred percent. Um, so And that I mean, all leads you here. And it all leads you here. Yeah. Cause any alter any any alteration in that 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 decision making, man, it takes you somewhere else. hundred percent. You ever seen um what's that movie with Matthew McConaughey where he's in space? Uh, uh, Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah, yeah. And 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 those no. strings. Every time she did something new in the fifth dimension. Yeah, I think, fourth, it, it, fourth some, dimension. Some dimension, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It altered. It altered everything to where he made it home, and she was like an old woman dying, and so 
it, it, it's just it just it's it's the same thing, man. You know, you can't go back and alter fate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And things that are meant to happen. So Right. That's how I feel. Yeah, I love you know I, mean? I loved how when when he was in that that space, that fourth dimension, you you were watching the strings connect exactly through his timeline. Exactly. And how there was like multi versus it was like crazy. Yeah. Was, that was massive yeah. crap. But yeah. yeah, I think that's I think that's well put. That's definitely explains how that kind of like that ripple effect and everything exactly. is kind of like a, a end result. Yes. You know what I mean? So tell me about what age you started music making music. Like I was I, like what, what in a studio? Yeah. No. Well, I'm, I mean, I kind of want to, I want to, I want to dig into like your early on, what it looked like early did, on, I, what age were you at? I was always, I was always the kid that knew all the songs on the radio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Black mamas love saying shit. Like this was the saying when I was young. If you knew your damn schoolwork, like you knew them songs on the radio, oh, you'd be yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. Because I knew every song on the radio, every rap song, word for word. Even R and B. I just love music. I think growing up in the golden era of music, which is the '90s, in my opinion, we had the golden era. Everything was every artist. Everything about the '90s was just it's beautiful. Popping. And I knew all the all the music. Drug dealers in my neighborhood would pay me money to rap, but it would be other people's songs. So I knew them by heart. They were like, rap that crisscross song and they'll give me $5. Oh, no you way. You know, rap that whatever, whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you were like performing it for them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already like, I was already developing that muscle. I was already working that muscle in terms of entertainment, yeah. performing arts. You yeah. know what I mean? And I remember like yesterday, I, was, I wasn't in kindergarten yet. I started school late. My mom was dating a guy who had like this Azuzu Jeep, but he gave me a tape. It was Criss Cross. I think the name of the album was I Missed the Bus. Yeah. And I swear to God, I would listen to it front. It would click, and then you got to flip the tape, yeah. put it back. I would listen to it front to back, back to front. And I don't know why, I always been just so pulled to hip hop. Yeah. Always, my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And I remember reading the book, The Alchemist, and it says, you know, your your manifest destiny is something that's always been there with you all along. You feel what I'm saying? Rap has always been there with me. It's always, it's been like a twin, yeah. like a sibling that's always been with it me. It needed a catalyst to bring it out? It, it, like, it, uh, I mean, it was just, it was just always in me. And, yeah, yeah. and so it always came out of me. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. all, I, I would always rap, man. Always rap. Yeah. I would be in the mirror rapping. I would dress up like a rapper. I would wear my clothes backwards. I would want to get, you know, my initials carved in the back of my head because it was like rap. It was hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So I was I was always in love with it though, bro. And and moving into this neighborhood called Hampshire Hills, it was a lot of kids that rapped. And this is when the microphones were embedded into the computer so you could rap into the computer kind of it's like these yeah. you know the the original computers they were kind of big and bulky the ones that were like off-white cream yeah, looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah man and my boy had this ugly little microphone it went into the computer and it was like a game controller mic i don't know it stuck up and it had a little head on it but it was a microphone yeah and we would pick it up and pass it around and every time it got to me to rap i feel like people were always anticipating me to rap like bruh he finna like, this is what they tell yeah, you, yeah. like, bro, you finna go off. You know what I mean? And I'll rap, and everybody be like, bro, like, yeah, like, and and I never thought anything of it. Yeah. Yo, you know? that's, that is a dope story. Yeah, I, I really like that. that. Because, I mean, because, like, at the end of the day, when you do listen to your music, you have a sound. You have yeah. a voice, a sound, and a flow. Whether, I mean, you mix up your flow, you get kind of, like, different with it from time yeah. to time, but it's always nice to listen to. And that's, like, I mean, that's probably what they were they were feeling at that time. Because it was, you know like, I mean? it, it was, like, my approach was always so methodical. Like, I, 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 would, all, I would be letting somebody else rap me while I'm thinking about what I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Even in the sense of, like, a freestyle, I might not... Eat, connected all of the dots in terms of what I wanted to say, but I always had that initial, this is how I want to come off yeah. on the record. Right. You know what I'm saying? And as I grew as an artist, I always wanted to be like, I never want to have to say my name when I get on the song. I always felt that was stupid. 
you know? I won't say any rappers catchphrases because I, I, this ain't about no other rapper. Yeah. But like when rappers would always say their names, I would always be like, but I already know who this is. Yeah, you should know. I, but I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this is Lil Wayne. Yeah, yeah. I know this is Gucci Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why do you feel the need to say that? So it, it, it was that era, I think, of music too, where everybody was, it's Gucci. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I don't think people do that no more. Yeah, I don't, I don't hear that yeah, no yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll hear people, you'll hear Drake being like, it's Drake. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you you don't hear that no more. I, I think the only rapper who consistently does it still is 21 Savage. 21. And he's like, 21, 21, 21. 21. Yeah, 21. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's, part of his. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I always had that about me. Like, my voice was always something that was so unique. Even growing up as a kid, I had a voice like this. Where people are like, yo, why you sound so old? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like a grown ass man. Yeah, they're like, yeah, why yeah. you like? Because I was little yeah. all through middle school. <laughs> I was like four eleven to like yeah. the ninth grade. I, I, dude, I love that imagery of you being just small with a grown with a crazy man voice. voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. super raspy yeah, voice, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and people are like, oh, yo, why you sound like that? And I, I would always get picked on for my voice. But uh, I remember watching a short documentary, and Pharrell was like. If you have a unique voice, you can make a hit record. That's, yeah. If you have a unique voice. That's coming from one of the goats himself. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. was like, all hit records are people who have all impactful records throughout the universe. The records that just like impact the world are yeah. all people with unique voices. Michael Jackson, Tupac, Beyonce. Yeah. I mean, anybody who has a record that's just like out of here are extremely unique and one of ones. You do have people now who can kind of recreate it via the formula but they're not that unique so it's just it's it causes a little ripple but it's not like that boom you know that that right. hits the world like yeah, jesus yeah. imagine when michael jackson dropped like thriller damn it's like you know My what is that moment talks about michael Come jackson on, bro. Man. like what is that moment like I watched a documentary on Netflix recently where they uh, showed you the in, they gave you an inside behind the scenes look at the creating of We Are the World. It was Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross. I mean, uh, 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 fucking uh, Sting. I mean, I can't even name the faces all of, the of the music for a long time. Bruh, the faces of music. Yeah. I mean, it was insane. Quincy Jones, yeah. Stevie Wonder. I mean, all of these energies in one room. You know what I'm saying? And and it's just like, imagine what that was. But everybody in that room was a one of one. Right. Now, you play some shit on the radio. I don't, I'm like, I'm like, that's future? It, They're like, nah, bro, that's a little sack in the bag. And I'm like, who the fuck, who the fuck is this? <laughs> sack in nah, the that's bag. Nah, that's, that's a little trail mix. That's He's like, little, that's a little gas pump. That. That's yeah, little gas pump. like, bro, who is this? Yeah, they all yeah, yeah. sound alike. Right. You know what I mean? Females, I, no disrespect to the female music, but I'll hear a song on the radio and I'm like, yo, this this sizzling, they're like, nah, that's a little leather suit or whoever the fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, this is yeah, kind of yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah, a little leather suit. So yeah, man, that's uh, you know, I fell in love with it when you had to be a one of one. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, there was no oh dirty bastard. There was not another one. He was so unique. It was crazy. It was almost scary. It's like he's like he's like not of this world. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, all the timeless, timeless artists that can be played from, you know, this moment on in in the past is is they're all unique. They're all yeah. unique, and that's what brings them to the, that next stratosphere. Who, who do you feel like the most impactful artist is ever? Ever? Yeah, like in your opinion. I, it's, so, I mean, I don't feel comfortable saying ever because I don't have an ever. I think that kind of changes. Okay, well, but, who's but the most I do, impactful I artist do, that you? I do have a you? most impactful for me, and I think That's what most, I'm saying, yeah. So, so, I think one of the most impactful artists that I have ever heard was mac miller i mean how old are you peyton i'm 25 okay but i mean, yeah, I mean yeah. it makes sense though you yeah, know what yeah. i mean i'm like 11 years older than yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. so my music consumption is very different yeah. i've never heard a mac miller song i have been emotionally connected to yeah. and there's no disrespect no to no mac no, miller, no, no i think I'm he's a great artist yeah. but i never he wasn't ever a part of like yeah, I, I, I it, my world, but I re, I liked Mac Miller because he came out in that whole Rostam record with yeah 
era and i was like oh this this kid cool you know what i'm saying my love for him developed though mm. so like it was uh, tell me about this love story yeah so 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 it i mean i started listening to him i want to say right in the seventh grade when era. did you fall in love with him <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until recently it developed into love uh he, he's dead now so yeah uh, rest in peace to, to the, the miller man one of the goats in my yeah. opinion hey, hey uh, rest in peace to the goat yeah, one of the goats yeah, man if yeah. you go to your book i respect it i ain't here to you know what i mean yeah. yuck your yum brother yeah, I, I'd say that. You People do. don't say that. People I don't say, say yuck or I yum. I say that. I say that. Did you get that from me? Absolutely I, He got that from me. They'll play. Bro, stop. <laughs> <laughs> what if you ever said that around me? No, I have always say yuck or yum. You got I am not going to die office. on this hill, though. I want to talk about Mac you Miller. Die let on me, that hill. Let, you better let, die on that yeah. hill because you ain't turn me on to that. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so... Mac Miller, when he first dropped, it, for me, it was his kids' album. So that's kind of like one of his like debut albums, the kids. first that put him on okay. as kids. Yep. And it was this this like hyphy hip hop rap. He was kind of like establishing himself as a serious artist. You know, being a white boy, being all these things that were kind of like you know used against him in a world where like you really had Eminem before that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. That's that young adolescent brain of mine really was just like, oh, I like loud, fast beats. You know what I mean? And it, it touched me in a way where I was like, OK, he's dope. But as time and as I aged, I almost aged with his discography, because if you listen to his early work versus his his later work up until his death, it is starkly different. Yeah, it is more hypnotic. Mm -hmm. It's more more beat focused and, and very uh, emotion evoking lyrics. Mm -hmm. He was talking from the heart instead of, you know, you know, you like to say vanity, you know, where it's just like, it's out there, it's loud, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, that's what really knocked him to the top level. In my opinion is he was able to grow and reflect that growth in music. Unlike anyone I have ever seen, mm. because in my opinion, there is only a few artists that have really matured you, their music. Oh, I, God, you you so pat. I, you know, I ain't never heard you talk so passionate. You got like a cry bubble in your throat. Hey, like you really nah, I'm feel that my voice. shit. I'm losing my voice. Nah, it's okay. No, 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 like, no. You no really I, I'm really like, yo, my nigga, fuck with Mac. Like, no, no, no. You I, finna I fuck cry about that I shit. I fuck with Mac. I fuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, I ain't, I ain't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Bro, don't stop at the economy. But I was like, yo, my man really like you get choked up a little nah, bit. Like, bro, I, I swear that. it's because of my voice. I was. It's okay. <laughs> Let that shit out, bro. <laughs> yo, this is yo, absolutely yo. unexpected. Yeah. Do some unexpected shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. it's okay. But go ahead, man. Don't let me. I just that's I mean? that's that was kind of the the bow on that conversation okay. where it was like where it was like I just. I just recognized the growth while I was growing. Yeah. And so I was able to like emotionally attach mm. to that in, in like a deeper way over the, like a surface level yeah. because artists usually stick to what they love mm -hmm. and what they know. Yeah. In my opinion, where their music, you, you listen to artists, there's some <laughs> outliers, but you kind of get the gist of how they're going to sound until they retire. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, like, but but to be fair, a lot of these artists put themselves in a box where I genuinely feel like the audience don't really want to hear growth from certain artists. I don't want to hear Future talk about current events and uh, prison reform, social justice reform. I'm not, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's it's like... <clears throat> I don't I don't go to certain places to get my news. You feel what I'm saying? So it's kind of like I want to trust reliable sources. And that's where I want to be able to pull from. Mac Miller is w one thing that he has working for him. And this ain't necessarily a race thing, but I do genuinely feel like the artists that aren't of African American or minority descent they have the ability to be able to transcend, right? Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's a fucking governor. You know what I mean? Like straight up, yeah, like California. Mean, yeah, yeah, But yeah. then, okay. Movie but, star, but, but, okay, politician. Right, right, but okay, but also 
Wesley Snipes could never do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but I just say it leaves an open space. It leaves this canvas for Mac Miller to continue to paint and evolve and grow. You know what I mean? Right. He's, but most rappers are just like put in this box. They like Bob Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you only paint woods and trees. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Happy you know trees. what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be weird if we seen Bob Ross paint Times Square. We'd be like, uh, this is a little different for you, Bob. Like, we ain't really. You know, we come to you for the trees, man, and the yeah, landscape. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that a lot of urban artists aren't really allowed to grow. Nobody gives you permission to grow, but imagine when certain artists start developing more socially conscious content. If, if Future came out today, like NBA Youngboy, for instance, yeah. rec- more recently he started talking about like how his music was the soundtrack to genocide and how he feels bad that a lot of kids went out and killed to his music um, and he was being paid to do that. And he said that he felt bad and he talked about that. He, he, he This is when he first started letting people into his world where he is right now uh, in Utah. And he has a, like an eight minute song and I listened to it. I was like, damn, it's deep. I'm thinking this, he's about to go on the path of like redemption through the music. Right. But... Whoever got to him was like, no, we, that's what we not finna do. Right, right, right. You right. need to rap about killing, stepping, shooting, and repping. Like, we not finna be, you're not about to use your platform to be liberating and telling people, like, how you feel bad. What's done is done. You can't go back and change that or rectify that. Move forward. Yeah. And he back making the same music. Just, and I guess that, that, I mean, you would know better than I, but- where do you think that that pushback's coming from? Do you think it's the fans of his music or do you think it's a record label? Where do you think that 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 voice in his ear where it was like you can't be making music like that because I feel like you for example, I mean, just listening to your early stuff versus your stuff now? Yeah. Different. Yeah. But it's matured. Yeah. I mean, arguably you can say that you have changed and matured your music over time. For sure, definitely. But I, I also didn't have anybody in my ear. I also didn't have anybody who I was a part of their ecosystem financially, right? right? That if I start rapping a certain type of way, this means that, okay, the money going to stop flowing. If De Niro starts rapping like this liberated guy, then it's like, oh, we might have a problem on our hands because now the listenership is going to be on a decline. Right. At the end of the day, I think that once you have uh, the ear of a certain – NBA Youngboy has a cult following. I genuinely believe that. You know what I'm saying? So I think in whatever direction he goes, people are going to follow him. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I think that they're going to accept him. But what isn't good for business is now you're trying to teach kids to get on the right path. So if kids get on the right path via the music because you are so impactful, that that then affects the economics of the music that you make and how it contributes to the downfall of a certain group of people who are already being oppressed. So if you're making the soundtrack that these kids go out, listen to commit crimes, which keeps the jails populated, which keeps money flowing through the privatized prison system, all of these different things, you feel what I'm saying? So it's like, why would we want you to start rapping different? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? And then what, what, what happens is once an artist like that starts to see, oh man, my listenership ain't going down since I'm telling people the right thing let me stay on this path guess what happens other rappers start being like yo like buddy talking like he got some sense for real i've been wanting to start rapping about this shit he done inspired me to start rapping about this you got to think music was socially conscious completely socially conscious at one point in time right meaning meaning current events were being spoken about at, on at, a regular period right riots yep. oppression yeah yeah uh, the 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 prison industrial complex right. all, all of that you know what i'm saying yeah. jim crow everything was being talked about in the music yep music was where you went to go get liberated music artists were essentially reporters on the environment around them telling the world like this was happening right yeah now. that's i mean i've never actually had it spoken to me yeah. like that and it, it it's yeah that makes a lot of sense you see what i'm saying I mean, so it's, it's, it's big business right for people to 
You see what I'm saying? No, like, no, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, so they, 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 they ain't yeah, really yeah, yeah. tripping. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's big business for 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 guys not to uh, transcend and become anything other than what they have been perceived as originally. You yeah. know, but I, I and I, but I think that that really just goes for a lot of the urban rap acts. If you put yourself in that box, Tyler can do whatever he want. Tyler take pictures like he's twerking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, yeah. and I love the freedom because Tyler the Creator didn't put himself in his in that box. But I also know that Tyler the Creator longs to be accepted by a group of people who never accepted him too, because he always rebels against that group. Like nigga, I don't, I don't wear mirrors and I don't do this and it's I don't do that. It's a part of that. his identity. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's it's like speaking or or punching down at a certain group of urban people that live their lives that way. You're, in, I know he's impacted by that because that's that same group of people who never accepted him. So if you were okay with not being accepted by that, you would never punch down on those people. He was like, I ain't never bought a bus down and on Rock of Mary's. It's like, okay, well, that's not for you. You don't necessarily have to speak to that. Right. But you're also punching down at a group of people who, who that's their lifestyle. You know what I mean? That's what they choose to wear. And I, and I got a lot of respect for what Tyler done built. And I listen to him. I fuck with him. I like that he can live and exist outside of that box. Get but it. what I was saying is – Let's let's bring it into creativity, man. I think okay. I think Tyler is one of the most brilliant artists and creatives to this date, man. Yeah. He moves like I have never seen anyone move creatively. He, well, he, He's he, on that. He that reminds level. me of Pharrell. He's like a, a child of Pharrell. Right. He he yeah, idolized yeah. Pharrell Williams. Everything about Tyler is Pharrell. Yeah. Tyler over at Louis. Now. I mean, Turned up a thousand percent, but yeah, uh, what, what? Uh, in like, terms of like he, how loud he is. Yeah, but he turned that stuff. shit down though. He met with Pharrell and and he said he was at a studio session. I was watching a documentary on Tyler the Creator, and he said what because he used to get banned and all of this shit. People were trying to cancel him. You realize that doesn't happen no more with Tyler. You know what I'm saying? He he. It's like he anchored himself down, and he's very business oriented now. Yeah. You know, but he said he met with Pharrell and Pharrell was like, yo, man, hey, look, you can keep doing all of this wild shit or you can make music and you can make money. What you want to do? And he was like, damn. You know, and 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 you know, that's not what he said verbatim, but that's just yeah, like, yeah, right, right, right. you know what I'm saying? That's like, in a nutshell, kind of like what he said, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and when you look at the evolution of Tyler, his trajectory has just been like, yeah. since he cut the bullshit out. Yeah. Been crazy. Just blown. nail polish, golf way. It's, it, it's so, I mean, it's on, so bro. consistent, man. Yeah. It is consistently at a live, level that is just, I mean, just like on the day to day content is just <clears throat> so polished and so like out there. Yeah. And I, man, more power to him, man. He is out there doing it, a man. thing as a director, as yep. a creative, as a musician. Yeah. Like man is man is out there. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, let the people know what what you do with your creative process. How do you write music? How did what is to walk me through kind of the evolution, how it started, maybe how you made music, mm. maybe how it is now. Mm. Uh, I want. I really want to. I want to get some inspiration from you, brother. I I freestyled all of my earlier music. Yeah. Um, I was a freestyle artist. I couldn't write music. And I think that freestyling is a muscle, just like writing music. I was so good at freestyling, I didn't have to write the music because I could get in there and rap it in such a way that people would think I wrote it. But I could never say the same thing again because it was a freestyle. So I would do takes over and over and over again. And they're like, say, this, say that other shit you said. And I was like, I don't what other shit. I don't remember it. It's like once it goes out of my mind, it's out of my mind. You know what I mean? And uh, so I was signed to an independent record label out of Charlotte, North Carolina, Black Flag Records. And I got in the studio with him for the first time. And he was like, I got in the booth. And I kind of froze up for real. I kind of clammed up because I was like, this is my first time in a real studio. I was like, damn. Like, like me doing the up. intro of this podcast. Yeah. yeah I yeah, froze yeah, up yeah. like you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. And, and, he, and he was like, come out of the booth. And I came out of the booth and he was like, do you know how to write music? 
And I was like, no. And he was like, okay, I'm going to give you this beat. And you, you go home and like try to write to it. And I was like, all right, cool. I was living with my cousin and my uncle at the time. And I'm one of those people, man, I can't sit still to save my life. No, you cannot. I, damn. You okay, are, I wasn't looking to have bro, that affirmed. No, Thank you. No, Thank you. You are. I was not everyone looking that knows to have you. that affirmed. Thank you, Peyton. God damn. <laughs> you Punch are busy. Bro. You, bro, no. <laughs> I Actually, I love this about you. I'm sorry to break, break up with what you're saying. I need to defend this. Yeah, yeah. I love it about Even though it. I don't need a defense I, for that. No, 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 I no, no. said it, no, no, go, no. Ahead, go ahead. I've go taken ahead. it to my personality. Yeah. You say, hello, how are you doing? To almost every person you cross uh, by yeah, on the street. Yeah. I've learned to do that. Yeah, facts. Because it inspired yeah. me. Because it's like, why am I not? Because you are what yeah. the energy you put out. Facts, And yeah. so I've taken that from you, you, bro, that mentality. But you are a Thank busybody. You. you owe me nothing yeah, yeah, from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, owe me nothing yeah, from that. Take that. Um. I, I mean, in, in a sense of like, okay, Fran was doing her taxes last night and she sat there for six hours at a computer and did it. And I said, I could never sit still for six hours in one place. And she was like, well, how do you get things done? I said, well, when I need to get things done, I always come back to it, but I can't just sit and do a task. Yeah. I don't think everybody is designed the same way to, 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 to operate the same way. We don't. We don't process the same way. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I feel comfortable being up here Indian style right now. Like, I, I genuinely feel comfortable in my body, in my, in, in everything. You know what I'm saying? How everything is flowing right now. This is the most comfortable, I think, position that I could be in, in the moment. And then I could also get into another position, too, if I feel uncomfortable. But I just... I don't think I had the patience at the time to sit still and learn how to write music. So... I'm living with my cousin and my uncle, and I tell my cousin, I said, yo, lock me in the closet, dead ass. I lie to you not. I said, yo, lock me in the closet. I took a screwdriver and I reversed the locks so that the lock was on the outside right, of the right. door instead of the inside. Right. And I said, lock me in here and don't let me out until I bang on the door, you know? And he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, I'm going to write this song. You know your cousin said, and, bet. He yeah. said, I, I, with pleasure. Yeah. He said, he with to pleasure. Lock my ass in the <laughs> and uh, so I'm in there and, I, and I'm writing this song and I get claustrophobic. I'm like, I'm in a fucking closet, man. <laughs> you know, like, and I start freaking the fuck out. Yeah. I just bang on the door and, and, and he comes to the door and I was like, I'm going to write the song. I don't want to leave out the closet. Just leave the door open. You know what I mean? I can't do that. Like, my mind is. And I sat in there and, bro, and I wrote this song. And uh, it's still probably one of the most prolific songs I've wrote to this day. It was called In the Ghetto. First song I ever wrote in my life. It was Perfection, you know. And I and I I remember um, going in there and rapping it for him. And he was like, "Whoa, man! Like this is incredible," you know. Yeah. And uh, that 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 kind of started me on my way. I didn't freestyle no more after that. I just didn't have the desire to because In the Ghetto was so organized in terms of my thought process, like it allowed me to structure all of my thoughts. It's like throwing everything up on the whiteboard and taking the best things from it and writing it down. That's how I felt like, whoa, it felt so organized. Like my thought, my train of thought, you know? And I was like, oh, For I don't want to freestyle no more. For the first time you felt that. You felt yeah, that Yeah, I felt that organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can access things in my brain, pull from it, organize it, create it, and then put it in the world. And it'll be received. And I just fell in love with that process of pulling things down from my brain, creating it. Well, pulling things down from my brain, creating it, putting it in the world, and they receive it. And I just kept repeating that over and over. And I would say the first five years, six years of my music career, I probably did 10,000 hours. I would be in a studio like maybe 12, 10, 12 hours in a day sometimes. And we had no windows in the studio. I never knew what time it was. You know, I would be in there on Monsters and uh, Straight on Adderall. casino time. No windows. Yeah, for real, bro. Yeah, 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 Like, I would be in there just create. I was a monster, bro. I was a machine. Like, I was just making it over, 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 over. Repetition. And, um, yeah, that, that that's my process. And still to this day, I, I don't think that I access my creativity the way that I used to yeah. back then. Yeah. Now it's more like, when it comes, it flows if I don't force it. But then it might be months. And I have to be okay with that. 
or I can sit my creativity in a room and say, hey, listen, you know, I need something from you. Yeah. And sometimes it'll be like, okay. And sometimes it'll be like, well, I don't care. Yeah. You know, have you, have you ever experienced the, you know, like people call it the flow state. I call it the flow state, but I feel like it's so intriguing to me because I, every time I've felt it, it is, it is like a fire that will not go out. It, mm. Everything is just matching so perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so the most recent time I felt like I was in the flow state was on our nightmare video. Mm. Where you everything, was in your bag, oh, my man, boy. It, everything felt bag. like it was clicking. Yeah. And I, it felt so good. I felt like one, everything I have visualized is coming to life and it's so organized and it's, it's, it's being executed how I saw it was. Yeah. And so that's the last time I experienced it. And it always goes in like spurts, mm -hmm. like you won't have it for a while and mm -hmm. then you'll hit it. And it always feels like something you can reproduce, but mm -hmm. I've struggled to reproduce. It always yeah. comes at, at random times. And have you, have you felt that like where everything is just clicking on um, all cel cylinders? Uh, I, you know, what's so crazy. I experienced what you experienced vicariously on the nightmare video shoot though. I, I kept telling you like, man, this is like, this is like, well done, like put together. I can locked. just feel it. You yeah, know, yeah. I had never worked with Russ or, um, what's my guy's name? Uh, start with an M Malachi, uh, Moses, Moses, Moses. See, I knew it was, it was like a biblical name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I had never worked with him before. But I just, I, I was like, these guys are, you know what I mean? I could feel it energetically. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't know them, but I know that they're good at what they do. Right. I don't know why. You never even showed me anything from Russ, ever. You yeah. just told me, you, you was like, I got a guy. I was like, this dude, man, he's so just weird with I got a guy, you know? Like, And I was like, well, who is he? You know, he was like, oh, it's my guy, Russell. I'm like, all right, man. And I pull up, and energetically, I was like, Oh, they know what the fuck they're doing. Oh, Russ is locked in. Oh, I, I could feel it yeah, yeah, immediately. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I could just, the way that they moved, you know, and, and the way that the day just, everything was in alignment. Yep. Nothing was, uh, you know, it felt like we was just swimming with the current. Nothing was against the grain. I, I felt that. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever you were tapped into, I called you after. And I was like, yo, bro, like, yeah. Yeah. This going to be it. It's it. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful feeling, man. Like, I mean, shout out to Rush. Shout out to Moses. Like, yeah, like for sure. They were, they were really, I mean, I'm talking they as he's not, like, behind the camera right, right. now. But, but he was able to foster an environment and, and, and visually explain what was in my head on a level where I was just, I was just locked in. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no better words for it because everything was handled. I saw it. You know what I mean? I planned all of this stuff with Russ. Yeah. And so when he was taking care of his end of that position, like it was game on, man. Yeah, I feel it. Like, and it's so funny that that we're talking about this because every I was going to originally have a first AD on to kind of help organize things and keep us on time. We went over by an hour we cut very few scenes in every single AD I reached out to. They said it is too much to do in one night. And we proved them wrong, bro. Yeah, I mean. We but, proved them know, wrong. It's, 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 it's kind of hard to. And that's why I say, man, a lot of times, you know, keeping your hand on your vision, a lot of people ain't going to be able to see it. Hey, Portland's hitting 70 degrees this weekend. I seen that yeah, shit. I'm finna yeah, go out of town, yeah. man. It always hit when I'm leaving. I think that is a beautiful way to wrap this up. What? I want to talk about, you know, projects going forward. Okay. Things you got in motion. Mm. And more importantly, I kind of want to tease the fact that we might be going to Charlotte. And no, might be. I'm going. You might be coming. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I'm, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah. I'm damn sure going yeah, 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 to yeah. Charlotte. Yeah, but we got, I mean, we, you know, at the end of the day, the cool part about it is, man, I like that you always open to ideas. And when I send you something, um... It's it's like it's like I, I don't know I, like if if somebody sent me a song and was like damn you should make a song like this bro it's crazy I don't think I would be open to that but if somebody sent me a beat like you should rap over this that would be very different but when I send you video links I respect the fact that you could take from it like 
damn, this is cool. Like yeah, yeah. I, I, I would be down to recreate something like that. Like that is cool. You know what I'm saying? So I think that open mindedness that you have and, and your willingness to bring on people that are like skilled in that area of what they do. And, 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 and I always reference Jackie Moon. Right, that semi-pro. He's yeah, yeah. the owner of the team, point guard, and the coach. Like you don't, you understand that you can't wear all those hats, and I respect that. You know, so when I sent you that current video link for that video, and you was like, "Bro, I love to do something like this," or anything that I see that I'm like, "Bro, like this is fire." Like let's kind of recreate our version of this. Yeah. I love that you always down, or you know, you at least down to at least consider. Yeah, that you know what I mean, and I think that's important. But yeah, um, I'm excited, I, especially if you come to Charlotte, bro. Just so you can see how everything moves. I, I, that is my most ex- exciting part. Is like I know, I know, I can feel how you move yeah. in Charlotte. Yeah, and it's different, and I yeah. want to feel that, man. I oh, want to, I want to get it visually. <laughs> like I mean, I was in a meeting from literally one o'clock to six thirty today, just yeah. hashing out hashing out ideas with my boy christian mm. like he like we were just chopping it up man because I, t- I told you i'm gonna get that i'm gonna get that shot list and that treatment bulletproof yeah so when, we, when, I, when i pull up there we ain't got to do it, nothing it, with point and shoot exactly yeah no i'm down i'm down man um that difference record too did you get that uh did you get that oh yeah reference that i sent yeah, you yeah for yeah, that? yeah yeah all right so if you throw it up under the video i don't necessarily think the bpms changed any you know i haven't i haven't threw it up yet so yeah. I've been meetings and all. I kind of want you so. to throw it under there at some point just to see, because I don't know why it sound a little fast to me. Yeah, I I caught a glimpse of it, and but I didn't, didn't know it, if it was the mix or the actual BPM. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I don't think he changed the BPM. Okay. At all. Yeah. But I could also ask him, but I don't think he did. I just think that it, the clarity of it, because it was so muddy. On the other one that I think the clarity of the vocal just kind of makes it sound a little faster because yeah. it's not so muddy and heavy. You know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah, I got I got that record on the way. A difference. Difference. Um, yeah, man. It's a hot one. Oh, man. I, I love, love difference. difference. Strictly business. Trouble. Yeah. Trouble yeah. really the one I'm waiting on. You know yeah. what I mean? I know that that's going to that's gonna require a lot of hands. Yep. A lot of resources, but Trouble is probably one of the best songs I've made to date. I I re- the in the, Trouble's the one we've been kind of throwing back ideas back and forth. Boom, boom, it, boom, it's boom, just boom, 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 boom. it's so impactful. Yeah, any music video won't do its justice unless it tells its story. Oh, it, ha- it has opinion. to. It has to. I, I yeah. you know what? That's something that's so beautiful. I'd sit on it before I decided right. to put it out in a right. way that doesn't necessarily speak to the impact of the record, yeah. like prison systems. Um, I don't know if you ever heard that record of mine called prison systems. The record is so impactful. I've never shot any, I've yet to shoot a music video for it. It's been out maybe three or four years, yeah. but I own all of the music that I have. So it, it don't matter. I could turn around and shoot the video tomorrow. And that, that's, I mean, not to toot my own horn here, but that is something I really do cherish as a, a discipline as being a director Mm -hmm. is that I won't shoot anything unless I think it is up to par Mm -hmm. that my standards that I set for myself and for the quality of the track. I won't, I won't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's still songs that, you know, we thought about shooting, but, but (laughs) it's, 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 I, I respect that you would be wanting to tell me like I don't want to shoot this. You just be like, do you have no, another song that's no, fast like no, this? No, 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 no. That's the <laughs> hey, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. You're hey, like, oh, I want to shoot this. Like, I I want to shoot it, but I want <laughs> it to complement your music. Yeah, I nah, won't I won't fact. put cookie yeah. cutter music videos yeah. out there. Hey, he's like, do you have do you have another fast song like this? Because uh, I'm. Uh, this 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 just doesn't really fit the vibe. Hey, you fucked that up though. What? You fucked that up because you showed me a music video that changed my inspiration. Which I, one? The beam the fu music video. Go oh, check oh, the that black shit and white out. shit. Dude, oh, when yeah, I saw that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was inspired. I yeah, my eyes sure. lit up and I said, I gotta shoot a track like that. That's a fact. That's strictly that's, business gonna go crazy exactly. uh with that concept. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and it'll be a lot warmer down south too in North Carolina. Like it ain't gonna be this bipolar. 
bowling shit. Get me shit out the hoodie, bro. Get me out the no, hoodie. No, you're still going to be in a hoodie, yeah. but I'm just saying it's not going to be like rain. We don't yeah. have to worry about rain. It don't rain as much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, And the sun is out every day, yeah. which, um, you know, like Portland, <laughs> where when it's cold outside, you may not see the sun. But in North Carolina, if it's cold, you're still going to see the sun. Right. So you gonna, we going to have a lot of sun yeah. and, and little to no rain. So. Yep. I'm I'm excited, brother. Yeah. Well, I think this is a perfect this is moment. Absolutely unexpected. Absolutely yeah, man. unexpected. Yeah, hell yeah. To sit down with Ferrar, yeah, even man. though it was expected. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're putting you're putting splash media on. And uh, bro, I mean, I I truly want to say this on record that I yeah. appreciate you as a man and as an artist, dude. I, I love you, dog. Ah right, man, I love you too, man. Like, Thank you. I appreciate you're my boy, you, man. Yeah, and for sure. I definitely. appreciate I appreciate your work with me and yes, like, sir. you know. I hope y'all keep the name too, man. Yeah. Uh absolutely unexpected. I, that, that that's the name. That's yeah. the name. Absolutely unexpected. It's, Even though I won't say that I like the name was my idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't just don't trademark it. I ain't gonna trade. Yeah, Y'all yeah, can yeah. have that shit. <laughs> hey, that's just that that was just like something that was, you know, that just came at random. And I feel like if it benefit my dog, like I'm straight. Yeah. I'm good. I appreciate yeah. that. Well, yeah. this has uh, been absolutely unexpected hey. with your boy Payne Meyer with De Niro Ferrar. Yep. We're signing out. Sign Until out. next time. Catch y'all later. Boom. Absolutely unexpected, man. That's a that's a I'm telling you, man.